All right, and with that, it would appear that we are live. Fantastic. Well, we're going to let people sort of sort of enter the lobby and uh, join us here. So good to be streaming again. Uh, obviously, we did not stream last Thursday. Uh, I took the Thursday off. I took care of some stuff. And then, of course, Halloween happened, which was a really big, awesome thing. Uh, but it's good to be back streaming again tonight. It's good that we should be back on track for this Thursday for more Star-Lord. Uh, and it's so much fun that we are on track to put out our Wednesday video. So lots of good things happening. Lots of good things happening. Before we begin, I just want to thank uh, my patrons. I got four patrons now. I got Jennifer, uh, Pen, Dulce, uh, Kieran, and of course, Austin of AJ Plays Piano. I want to thank them all so much for helping make this happen. Uh, it's really awesome to have that kind of support behind me now. Uh, with that, we're going to dive right in. Uh, so today, we are going to be jumping over to the main screen. Awesome. So uh, this is a continuation of last week's Pepicure Tuesday. We are continuing to go through and just break down an entire build of an Iron Man Mark VII suit. That's the suit from the first Avengers movie at the end, where he's got the big pack and whatnot on his back. Um, and we are going to break down what that looks like in foam. Uh, and we're also going to talk a little bit tonight about the difference between uh, a functional Pepicura file uh, and what's actually possible with foam. So first things first, you can see here, we are looking at two different chest pieces. Uh, for the Iron Man Mark 7. Now, the Mark 7 does actually do something akin to what is happening over here in the right-hand window. Uh, this is uh, Omar Bao One's uh, Iron Man Mark 7 functional chest. Hey, thanks for checking out. Um, so this is uh, a functional chest. These plates do actually come off during the Battle uh, of New York, and as such... They are uh, perfectly valid to include in a Mark VII build if you, say, wanted to find a way to uh, attach those plates and have them uh, remove or kind of bump on and off. And, you know, that, that's up to you. You're, you're welcome to give, that, to give that a shot. However, I will say, even though you can rig up a pretty decent foam file for this, look, the, these templates are pretty simple. I remember going through and making them at one point, and they're not, they're not terribly complicated to put together. I will say that this might be a little bit more than you want in terms of detail on the side. You're going to end up with something that's maybe a little flimsier, something that's perhaps uh, a little wonky or doesn't want to sit together correctly. Um, and to that end, I, I prefer something more like what you're seeing over here with JTMs solid chest and this is a static piece front and back uh you'll note it is it is the front and the back not just the front or just the back that's because the oh good evening melvin uh the most accurate back i was able to find is actually by a different dude uh who goes by dark side 50 first and it is as complicated as you think because this is just the templates for the back not for the flaps that open now you can do flaps and things like that in foam it's just very difficult to make sure that it's fitting together properly after the fact without doing something to harden the foam. Uh, and this is where I kind of get into an ideological sort of uh, quabble with some of my contemporaries because I feel very strongly that uh, you can use foam for build that you mean to be, you know, solid or static. Uh, you know, you'd want them to be very rigid. You know, they, they have creature cast and other types of products to make foam as hard or dense or, or just durable as possible. But I think that uh, part of the charm of working with foam is its flexibility as well as its ability to bounce back if you make uh, a small, small error in it. Um, I've definitely outright sat on project pieces before and through just a little bit of reworking a little touch up uh brought them back to life and that's something that i think foam does very very well and i think it's something that you want to lean into and so for that reason we are going to set aside 
this functional back and this functional front, we are instead going to put up this static chest and back by JTM. Now, I made this back again in the days where I did not know what the hide tool was. So a lot of these lines are just painted white in the white space over here. If I were to put like a texture of any kind on there, ah, there isn't one. But if there was one, you would see a bunch of white lines appear, and that's not what we want. So we're gonna, we're actually just gonna undo this because I think that we we have the power uh, to make these, you know, just a little bit better, just a little bit better overall. So we're gonna undo our unfold here. Oh wait, cancel. We are going to first paint all of these lines black again, <laughs> um, just like that, go like that. Sweet, awesome. And now we are going to undo our unfold. Um, I am going to apply my open edge info just cause I feel like this is gonna save us some time. So in the past, what I would do is I would go to the 3D menu, edit mode, specify cut line edges, and you can run around this whole piece sort of identifying where the shapes are. Now I've, I've gone through and done that and also removed some of the smaller sort of width pieces that are not necessary for a full build like what we're going to be doing here uh, so let's go ahead and before we unfold this i'm actually going to go to edit mode i'm going to go to subdivide edges and make them smooth and i'm going to smooth out some of this because jtm's work tends to be a little chunkier um which is not to say that it's inaccurate just to say that i think that we can and should uh take a little extra time to make sure that everything is as smooth as we can make it so let's see what happens if I go like this. Oh, I like that. That's a much smoother subdivision of those rounded edges. Uh, I think that's still going to lay together pretty nicely. Uh, and what's more, I also have uh, a much cleaner uh, taper down into the housing of the arc reactor. So we're definitely going to keep that at it. But we're going to undo that for now because we want to do all of our subdivisions at the same time. Otherwise, we're going to be repeatedly subdividing. And that will actually slowly, over time, shrink our edges. I'll, I'll demonstrate that. If I click Go, and then I do it again, and I click Go, it just slowly continues to shrink that. And that's not what we want. That's actually super inaccurate at that point. Um, and it's just going to become a, a whole thing. And we want to avoid that. Let's see here. This also looks like it can be smoothed along this line. Uh, oh, I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can trick it into straightening that out. Oh, that would be really nice. Let's see here. I, I sort of can. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'll be, I'll be keeping that at it. Sweet. So there's a divot here, which with, uh, paper, which is of course what Pepicura is for, Pepicura being paper craft, um, it will, um, it really wants to have that sort of notch in there. But of course with foam, I can just leave a line there and know that I can either wood burn that in or carve it out or what have you. Um, so I'm actually going to smooth that over for the purposes of building this out of foam, which is great. That is super nice that it's letting me do that because Sometimes it goes a little wonky if you try to make really funky edits like that. Um, now that is not going to be correct. We don't want that line. This is trying to round out that corner. But the rest of that, the rest of that looks pretty darn good. Um, oh, and I am going to also hold on to that edge line there because I do want a bit of a corner on those parts. So we're gonna go through here, we grab that, grab this, grab that, is that correct? Am I missing something? I am missing something, what's going on here? I think that's right. Oh God, no, something, something weird's going on there. <clears throat> what on earth is happening there? Oh, okay, well, okay, we're gonna get rid of that triangle there because we don't actually need it, which means we also don't need that. There's like an edge sort of tucked under here that was hard to see, which is part of the danger of editing Pepicura like this. Of course, I suppose it's part of the danger of editing in any software, frankly, that you've got these sort of weird ridges and it can be hard to see what you're doing. Okay, there we go. Preserve those lines. That'll be good. 
and we'll smooth out that as well because that's kind of a weird line perfect awesome let's see what else can we do this is actually fairly smooth i like that um i kind of want to smooth out this to here because i think this is a very strange shape and uh, forgive me but not terribly accurate so we're going to smooth that as well yeah we'll call that good and then last but not least uh, I am actually going to go through and just do a quick smooth along this line here because this is going to be a very important uh, undercut later on and I would like to make sure that it is as smooth as we can possibly make it uh, because that will of course make it very easy to flatten out. Awesome! So with that now I am going to unfold this again. Now I had it about 21 inches in height, and that sounds about right. So I'm thinking about that, because it's to the bottom of the back there. Yeah, that should be about good. So we'll keep that height. I'm going to remove this, uncheck this box that says place parts avoiding page borders. Um, that is not necessary for this, because they're going to stretch over in multiple pages. We actually want that, because it'll allow us to put together pieces that are, frankly, much easier to put together. All right, let's see. Let's start. Let's just start from the center. We'll start from the center. We'll work our way out. We've got the very center circle here, and then we have these concentric sort of edge circles that get attached to it. Now, these can be joined together. I'm, oops, one second. I'm going to close this out real quick. Uh, it does not want to acknowledge my key commands. That usually means I've eaten up some uh, random access memory that it does not want to acknowledge what I'm doing anymore. Perfect. And there we go. Control N allows us to join and disjoin faces. These faces want to join to the circle, but we don't want to join it to the circle. We want to join this circle to that circle. So let's see here. We're gonna wanna go somewhere in between one or the other. So I say, we go ahead, we sort of join every other here. That'll give us a slightly flatter curve. We're gonna f flatten that curve. Oh God. Um, and in that way, you can also kind of see the corner at which this piece joins this curve, which is great. It's actually something we want. Um, and then that sort of rests in here. And this attaches to this, like, directly. I'm almost wondering if I may want to join this here. So there's a lot of virtue to doing it the way that I'm about to do it, <clears throat> which is that uh, obviously all I need to do is undercut this right here. Um, also, I was going to need to join this circle on some end because it's conical in nature, which means that I'm going to need to wrap it and close it again. Uh, and it's a question of how I want to make sure that that, how, how I make sure that stays. Because if I do it this way, there's a big piece at the bottom that will bind this edge together in uh, sort of a T, so that will close together and then another face will join it. But on the other hand, this will be a slightly less sharp edge. But I do think I'm comfortable with that given how strong the construction of this will actually wind up being. So we're gonna keep it like this instead. This is actually a pretty significant change from the last, from the last one. I like it, I like it. I think this is an improvement, let's see. Okay, so this, this, all of that, and probably these two are all going to be sort of one piece when we cut it out. Um, so I, I think, I, I think that's a great question, Melvin. Uh, it depends. What are you, what are you trying to do to it? Are you trying to make it more durable? Uh, are you trying to make it? Uh, not yellow you know there's there's a lot of different things you could be it, it depends on what your purpose is uh, i would say if it's durability you're looking for 
Uh, I have had the most luck with a substance called Plasti Dip, which, of course, I put on most of my builds. But they do make, yep, durable. They do actually make a clear coat Plasti Dip. Um, it's a little more finicky. It's a great product, though. I, I swear by it. Um, and I like Plasti Dip more than other types of rubber uh, spray ons because it's actually designed to be an aesthetic sort of choice. Uh, whereas things like uh, Rust-Oleum's like, and like Flex Seal and things like that are designed more for industrial purposes or for grip. Uh, but Plasti Dip is actually designed by to, for, for use uh, on automotive parts for the purposes of having a cover that you could peel back later on. Now, the only reason you can peel it back is because of the way you finish automobiles. Ultimately, what will end up happening is because it's you have to polish it so intently, you can, when you're done, peel it back up and you'll have a fresh surface underneath, um, which is not uh, quite as true for something like foam where there's a lot of glue involved and it really tacks down. Uh, but clear Plasti Dip is a, a, an extremely cosmetic thing. <laughs> it's, of course, a clear spray, spray on rubber, so you don't want to get that stuff anywhere near your lungs, you know, wear a respirator. Um, but clear Plasti Dip is also uh, perhaps the most finicky out of all of their paints because uh, obviously the chemical reactions that keep it clear uh, are extremely uh, temperature sensitive. So if you want to spray it down, uh, it's good to try and keep it in a temperature controlled environment. Um, obviously, it is not feasible for a lot of people to spray things inside, at least not paints inside, but if you have the option to, um, it's a great way to go about it. If not, I, I recommend rattle can spray painting in the wintertime uh, midday, in the sun if possible. <laughs> uh, but spray on clear Plasti Dip is uh, a game changer if you really need to up the durability of a prop. Uh, it's definitely something that can really up your game in a really fun way too because it's also kind of gloss so it can add a little bit of a shine to a piece um, but it's still got that rubber feel to it on the outside so it, it adds sort of like a like a weight to it it's like a, a nice prop you know how you get things and you you see you feel that it's made of something like it has a weight or it has a feel to it and you're like ah yes valuable <laughs> <laughs> awesome. There we go. Okay, sweet. So what's going to happen eventually is I'm actually just going to set these next to each other because you'll note there is a little groove in there and I don't want to use that groove, I don't think. Well, actually, I might just be able to... You know, it's not that thick. I might just join it there. Playing it fast and loose with this one. Let's see here. What happens if I go like that? That looks pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with it. Is there a way for me to get that corner even closer? I don't... Oh, yeah. No, there we go. Let's see, join those adjacent edges. Yeah. That's... Meh. Actually, no. No, I'm going to go with my original method because I will not have to explain in any way that this part uh, needs to be a straight line. So no, we're gonna do it the way I had it before. Yeah, glad to help Melvin. It's uh, honestly, it's a really cool product. It's not something I use on everything, uh, partially because a clear coat isn't super valuable for everything. Uh, and you know, other things can be a little, a little messed up by clear coat. Uh, I've definitely done some metal finishes in the past that have not reacted well with a clear coat. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's good for a lot of different types of finishes, um, and it won't interfere with it. Um, I really think it only interferes with things like super chrome looking parts. Um, and I'm talking like high shine, not even like a lot of the products that I use. I'm talking like graphite powder and things like that. That's the only time you're really going to see, uh, those kinds of intense problems and interactions. Let's see, I'm going to join this here. Yes. Yes. There we go. 
Okay, so these are just edge pieces. You can kind of see it's running around the outer edge of this. This is not something I would use in my build. It's just something that's kind of a byproduct of the way Pepikiro works. All right, one of the nice things about JTM's file is that it does feel very geared towards foam uh, because these are actually layered parts. They're not just hollow. There's a whole piece underneath. So I've got this piece right here, and then on top of it is this piece. So we've got this, which would layer on top of that, sort of like that. And then we've got these three pieces, which sort of layer across like a band. I'm going to sort of set them next to each other so that I know, so that I know which way they'll need to be set together in a minute awesome what I was doing there was just joining and disjoining phases because these are very much just like rectangles I'm just trying to make sure my direction is correct uh, and then this uh, because it's only three wide can basically be stuck together along the center line and in that way it sort of evens out the darts between the two sides and you don't lose a whole bunch of the shape that way I might be able to, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, so that was um, not as even there, but because I was able to addend it to another piece, I was able to even that out a little, little, little more. Here we go. Let's see here. Um, I actually really want to stick this part here to this uh, and use it as an undercut to guide just how much this sort of tapers under that edge because that's a really that's a really fine detail edge and if it's not the same on both sides it's gonna look a little funky so we'll just attach that there let's keep working around this is that part we just edited we're gonna grab all of that and let's see we've got this here and then it looks like It looks like this here, yep. Oh, no, 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 it's this line. That line there, nope. This line here, ah, there we go. This line here appears to be the center line that was marked before, and I'm going to leave those disjoined there just so that I don't forget. Awesome, working our way around. Let's keep going. I see, okay, so there's sort of a main groove to the back here, but it's made up of many pieces. You can kind of see along this line here, there's a single edge that we're gonna want to honor if we can. And to that end, I am going to go like this. I'm gonna remove that because I actually well, actually, no, I'll, I'll leave it. There we go. Grab that. Grab all of this. Sweet. Now, they don't necessarily directly line up, but you can see this single edge running along this entire thing, and that's, that's going to be important from a construction standpoint, so we really want to make sure that we honor it in our templates because that will make it easier later on for us. Now let's see here. This is going to sort of rest right in there. A lot of this is going to be sort of set together to imply where those uh, deeper grooves need to be cut. Now this is going to actually get connected there in a moment. Same with this. And then this is going to sort of jam up next to it. Here we go. <laughs> My favorite thing about this process, really, honestly, is the fact that none of these are ever quite the correct direction. It'd be so nice if I could just tell the machine I actually want them all facing the direction they're supposed to face. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so there's a little bit of an undercut going on here. We can glue that together if we just go like this. Da 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 Mm. There we go. Glue that together. 
awesome. So there is this little postage stamp looking thing on both sides here. And what that is going to do is fit right in there, right in there, and addend to this piece on both. And essentially, were I to build this myself, especially since I'm not doing, I, I, I'm not using functional flaps of any kind for this build. I think that this would work, this will work much better as, uh, oops, sorry, as a static piece that's just very comfortable to wear. What I would do is essentially make this as one piece and this is one piece and just sort of stick them together along that seam layering the material as i went to make sure that you know we honor those those raised and lower details but at the end of the day you don't actually need much more than that it's actually going to wind up being a much cleaner build yeah there we go <clears throat> and then of course we've got the sort of fake flaps over here Oh my gosh, this actually needs to... Ah, I'm missing a piece. Well, two pieces. Get this. Ah, get it on screen. There we go. Okay, so this piece... Oh my gosh, this piece goes right here. Like that. And this piece goes right above it. Like that. Perfect. And it will stand for all time. Gosh, here we go. Uh, but you can kind of see how uh, ultimately what happens with it is you sort of have all these pieces just separated by a thin line of detail, which is really, truly best rendered as like either an etched line or a scored line or uh, just out, outright heat burned into the foam. You're going to wind up with a much cleaner result than if you tried to glue together all of these pieces uh, individually. Uh, it's actually something I'm trying out with with uh, a little one day build I'm working on. So this is uh, a single piece Iron Man palm template that I had lying around and then I'm uh, gluing together these foam fingers for it. Uh, but for the hand piece, I, it's essentially a single wraparound piece with uh, a seam here and a seam here. Uh, and then all of these lines were burned in with my my soldering iron actually and then uh, just sort of sanded in here and I think it's looking really good and it's the same sort of thing we'd want to do with the full build it if it works for just the little part it can in fact work for the the whole thing now let's go ahead and see where we're at we have got those pieces awesome and then there's sort of this center piece running up the center uh, which is where we find the center, you know, in the center. Uh, <laughs> and then that's just going to be like three. It, it looks like three pieces. What I would probably wind up doing is, you know, very crudely making it out of one piece and layering two pieces onto it to raise these outer edges. Or you could just recess the middle piece. Either way, it's a very simple sort of spine there. This piece, however, is meant to mimic the flaps. Uh, and to do that, we sort of just wrap this edge around this face, which is a lot simpler than if it were to, you know, actually flap like a real flap. All right. But we need to sort of join our edges a little more carefully. Will that, will that do the thing? That does not want to do the thing. Oh, that's almost perfect. Holy cow. Okay. Here we go, join. Much like the halo helmet we did, this has a flap that doesn't want to line up with where it's meant to go exactly. You see, it's the actual space of the flap is bigger than the flap itself. Um, so what we would probably do is go ahead and erase just the inner lines and you would just cut one line and push in. That's, that's the easiest way to do something like that. Here we go. We'll even this out for the other side. This connects here, disconnects there. Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Uh, 
been cheated by you since I don't know when. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So I made up my mind it must come to an end. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. But we not go. We not slam down. I think you know that I won't be away for long. You know that I'm not that strong. Just one look and I can hear a bell ring. One more look and I forget everything. Oh, oh, mamma mia, here I go again, my, my, how could I resist you, mamma mia, doesn't show again, my, wow, just how much I missed you, yes, I've been broken hearted, blue since the day we parted, why, why, did I ever let it go, mamma mia, now I really know how I, I could never let you go. Do 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 do. Here we go. Okay, so this is that ed sort of edge piece I was telling you about that will also just up and wrap over the top of the shoulder. It's actually a pretty pretty nifty piece, and it goes together fairly easily, which is one of the things I. I love about that. This shape is not terribly complicated. One moment. Awesome. Uh, so this is something that I was not able to address in a past video, or a past build. I would really like this to be a little cleaner. Um, and I think the way I'm going to do that is actually, believe it or not, to not connect it to anything. Uh, because I think that this will create a much cleaner edge if it's a separate piece. <laughs> Thanks, Melvin. Uh, I think this piece is going to be better if it's separate, because I can actually bevel that edge hard when I cut it out. Um, and then all I would do is essentially add a little bit of extra material to this and glue it straight under, because this is like a 90 degree, this is like a 90 degree edge it, it bevels down just a little bit but i can i can fix that along this edge and so i'm actually going to leave it completely separate from all the other pieces which is so unlike me <laughs> for the sake of building i i tend to really try and work in as many uh, undercuts to save time and add detail as i can but i i think we're going to we're going to lean into this being a little simpler right there all right we're going to take this piece do it the exact same way we did the other piece. Just run it around this edge, tacking these pieces together. You'll note I'm trading those larger, some of these larger darts for smaller ones on the inside. And that will change the way these line up ever so slightly. But in the end, you're going to wind up with, you guessed it, a much cleaner build. Uh, because you're going to preserve the overall lengths on the outer edge of these pieces as much as possible. And that's that's really the important thing when you're trying to alter something into a foam pattern. Because everything we're doing here is like a little bit of a lie. It's just It's just trying to make sure that all of the lies are small enough and line up properly. <laughs> there we go. Movie magic. You know, I'm just trying to make sure that I've got this the same on, on both sides here. Yep, there we go. Okay, that's correct. This is good. Where are we at? Pretty, you're in a pretty good place. Um, I think this will actually need to be its own piece. I feel like if I try to attach it to this, it's actually going to become too harsh of an angle and it's not going to want to sit right. Like it'll it'll technically work, but it won't be a great fit. And that's that's not what we're looking for. It's it's just not. Ooh, what is that? Oh, I don't I don't need this. I would like that though. Okay, that's an unnecessary piece there. We need this. This will be important uh, as it sort of rests snugly against that piece there. What's going on here? 
So this... I mean, could I... Mm, well, maybe I do. Maybe I do addend it like this. Actually, that's definitely what I'm going to do. And I tell you what, if I were to build this, I might not use this as an undercut. I might use this as a guide to actually bevel these pieces on my brand new sander. I just got a brand new uh, belt sander, which will not be going in the shop that we have here right now. We're actually going to be moving in like two weeks. Uh, and I'm going to get a little more space for the shop. Uh, I'm going to set up uh, a really cool new sander that my, my wonderful fiance got me for my birthday. For my birthday. Very exciting. Um, and I would probably sand this uh, on that rather than bevel those down with an undercut. Um, and I would just use that as a guide, basically. Yeah, no, the shop's getting kind of a big upgrade. Uh, it's going to mean we can do some more builds, we can do some more videos. Uh, I'm really excited. We're uh, I, I don't I don't want to reveal too many details, but I'm working on a uh, a project with uh, another YouTuber right now. We're going to be doing a bit of a craft off in the coming month. So, oh, thanks, Melvin. We're going to be doing a, a craft off in the uh, coming month. So stay stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to be we're going to be uh, pushing each other a little bit and it's going to be a lot of fun. I like, I like finding new challenges for my craft. And frankly, I like interacting with other people in the community. It's a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun. Awesome. That's looking pretty good. These pieces are going to be more or less redundant uh, because the, the shape of this piece is already rendered as the hole that is left behind uh, in these pieces so it's not super important that we have them uh, in fact I will just go ahead and simplify them real quick and set them aside because we don't need them here we go we'll set that over there yeah my birthday tends to get really wrapped up in spooky season and let me tell you I have never been uh, upset about that because it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun although my mother my mother was uh very afraid that i was going to be born on halloween which she was she was not ready for which is very both very amusing to me and very fortunate for her that i i was not actually born on halloween let's see here i'm gonna tack that to this piece there of course that piece just sort of goes over there perfect all right and so now i think the only things really left here are just to even out the other side here we go in a lot of ways this is going to be quite similar to the way it was set up before um, but we've made a few, I, I would say we've made a few key distinctions. And in that way, we've also sort of talked our way through how we would break down a larger piece like this, uh, out of Pepecura into, into foam, uh, for our templating purposes. And that's, that's super exciting. Let's see, that's together already. Wow. Crazy. Join that. There we go. Scoot that all the way down here. Grab those pieces. Point that up and step down. What I might end up doing though to say paper is actually dividing these templates, or at least some of the bigger pieces that I'm sort of amalgamating down the center so that I don't have to, you know, print the entire back. I can just print one side of the back and flip it over and that that should hopefully, hopefully fix uh, some of the uh, conservation issues I have sometimes. Here we go. Oh, I need this too. I'll have to make a decision on which side I'm keeping. Um, oh, you know, I actually do have to finish these two pieces. They're not technically done. It's not just about setting them together. They're not 
not technically done. Okay, let's see. We we'll grab this piece and that piece. One more straight up. There we go. What am I missing? Missing this piece, which we'll put down here, set next to this right there like that. And just make sure that it is the exact same on both sides so that I don't have a weird sort of extra lopsided pattern. Okay, and then I need to do this piece the same way I did the other piece. Again, just sort of joining it down this, this center band so that we even out the darts. Yep, there we go. You can tell it's crunch time because I've started to get very quiet, very serious. Here we go. Weirdly enough, this actually joins at a, a straight line right here. So I'm, I could probably leave that together. No, no reason not to, I guess. In that same way, vein, I'd probably split this down the center because it's a big piece. And it is, of course, symmetrical. So there's no, no reason not to do that. Other than the fact that I like really big pieces. Let's see here. Okay. Grab that piece, this piece, that piece. Move them all down here. Set them all together so I know they go together. Like that. Ah, almost done. This piece requires no extra work. It's done already. And it looks like the rest of this is all like little pseudo sort of edge piece stuff um to that end i will just go ahead and make sure that it's all kind of simplified join sort of around this edge oops there we go yep we can actually just, yeah, we can just keep joining this edge together. Let's see. That's done. That's done. Cool. We can grab all of that. Mm, it's not quite the same on the other side. Yeah, where does it need to be joined? <laughs> think right there Ugh. see these pieces are just they're not necessary for foam so I don't want to spend too much time on them I actually like to just sort of get them out of the way so that I can join other more important things here Where does this piece go? What am I even looking at? That doesn't help. Boy, is that unclear. They're not necessary. Oh, there they are. Oh, God, it's like hidden behind and under there. That's the weirdest thing. I hate it. I hate it. Why would it be built that way? Oh my god. This is awful. And it has nothing to do with like the actual build. I just hate the way this in particular is done. Okay, well, that's all clean, I guess. Lord. Uh, those are done. This is something. Oh my god. It's actually even, so I'm going to call it done. Same here. Actually, I really think most of this is done. Unless, what's going on here? Hmm. 
Yeah, well, what the, the heck is going on here? Okay, that works, I guess. Boy, am I unclear what's happening here. What on earth? It's like a bunch of concentric circle edges. Okay, that works together there, I guess. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I'm finding the symmetrical pieces now. Lord. There we go. God, what is that about? That's awful. I'm sure it's like deeply necessary to the way this thing is built out of paper, but it was also the worst thing I had to look at. <laughs> Just awful. Zero out of 10. Here we go. Just gonna keep sticking these pieces together until I reach something that resembles symmetry. Or until it just stops me. What on earth? Oh, no, that's... We're going to call that... Call that good. Ooh, which means that there must be an identical piece that can be made on this side. Ha-ha! Making symmetry work for me. Wait, shouldn't this join to that? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. Oh boy, do I not understand what's going on here. And I don't want to understand. I just want to leave all of this alone. I would like to be done. May I be done? <laughs> Please? Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, okay, I think... Oh, God. What is going on here? Why don't these pieces go together? What is happening? Okay, that, that goes there, this goes there, that goes there. Okay, that's starting to make sense again. Starting. <laughs> God dang it. Come on. God dang it. Okay, I understand what these pieces are. This is just nothing. This is nothing but on the other side. Okay, nothing, nothing. Oh God, what do you go to? Well, that's a loop. I don't know what it's about, but it's a loop. Oh no, this links to something important I can just tell. Uh 
Oh, no, that's not important. Never mind. I take it back. Yeah, no, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Oh, I can tell we are almost done, which is great because we're like out of time. <laughs> you know, an hour is really the the perfect length of time for these things. Oh, Lord. Okay, that's done. Yep, that's now even at long last. Sure, why not? We're gonna call that done. We're gonna join adjacent edges. Wait, no, no, that's right, that's right. I didn't join these together. Ah! <laughs> okay. I am going to sacrifice, which edge am I going to sacrifice? I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of that edge because this doesn't actually go anywhere. So it's okay if that's open a little bit more. Same there, frankly. Okay. Yep, because that'll line up still, which is exactly what we need. Awesome, that's cool. Those work. Nothing needs to be joined there. Nothing needs to be joined here. Well, it will need to be joined, but later. Let's go ahead and join adjacent edges. 10 millimeters. We'll just smooth this. Oh, shoot. Can't quite do that. That's okay. So here's how we're gonna get around it. We're gonna just not... Hmm. We might actually just leave these separate pieces. Yep. Yep. Too much joining. Too much joining. That's better. That's much better. <laughs> LOL. Okay, so we're going to erase some cut lines. Or not, not erase some cut lines. We're going to erase some of these valley cuts that are actually super unimportant. But we're going to keep some of them as guides to where all these other pieces go. Because this sort of the edge there you can see how this sort of shows us where the rest of these pieces need to line up with this piece look at that I would argue this is also pretty easy to understand which is one of the ways I really try to unfold for foam I try to unfold in a way where if you're looking at the 3d and you're looking at the 2d it's pretty clear how the 2d and the 3d go together that's that's important there we go this is actually a detail line there in the suit so i'm going to leave those pieces like that there we go don't need those lines Ooh, you know what actually i think i can stick these pieces together real quick yeah i think i could do it pretty simply too Wow, yeah, no, I think I'm definitely going to do that because that looks way better. Yep, there we go. I love it. I'm gonna add this piece there too. Yeah, that looks great. That's actually a, that's a very easy undercut, so I have no problem adding that in here. There we go. I'm just going to rejoin adjacent edges here. I had I've not joined those jet edges. There we go. Mm, actually, I'm going to move this right there so I can preserve that edge a little bit better. Sweet. Ah, no, don't recalculate. Just join a jet adjacent edges. Adjacent edges. Why is that so different from this one? I'm not totally certain why. Is it actually better if I do it this way? 
Oh, God. I kind of hope it isn't. Oh, it is. It's way better if I do it that way. Okay, well, we'll do it that way then. Epicura, I don't know what your algorithms actually say inside your weird computer brain, but like if that's if that's what works for you, that's that's the way we're gonna do it. That's just, just the way it is. Here we go. Erase those lines. Don't need those lines. Don't need these lines. Don't need those lines. I do need that line. That's an important line. Here we go. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Not that. All right. Get rid of those lines, get rid of these lines, and then join them together. And where we join them, <laughs> we leave the detail line that was all we needed. Awesome. Awesome. Don't need any of those lines. I don't think. Do I need those lines? I need to look at a I need to look at a, a picture of this. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm actually like genuinely unsure whether there's supposed to be a line there. Okay, so it does actually look like there might be lines that run down the sides here. So those are guided by those lines on top. And I just need I just need a, a good clear shot of the top here. Oh, okay. So there's lines that sort of run the length here like this. Oh, whoops. I'm going to paint those back in real quick. Because there's also a line that runs sort of cross-sectionally like this. Oh, this is super weird. Okay. Okay, I've got a hang of it now. I've got a hang of it. There's a line that runs across there. The line runs here. Yes, that is what it's supposed to look like. Whew. We saved it. We saved it, folks. There we go. And then that... Yep, that ends in a line right there. Which is a very separate thing that's happening, but it d does look that way. Go. Don't need that. Go. I am going to leave that. There is an undercut, undercut slash line here. Yep. Yep, there we go. That's what we needed. All right. Okay, and then this is pretty much all unnecessary here. Okay, yep, that is the shape we needed. Perfect. All right, we are racing the clock here, but I think we've gotten a lot done today. We'll have to take a look at the, the abs next week, I think. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Just just keep pushing abs down the line. You don't need abs. <laughs> Lord. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're going to push that one back. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That looks great. It's really cool how you can you can see the detail being preserved there. Like this, these lines look appropriate for what the actual final build will be, um, and it's it's cool to see that just sort of rest in place there. Awesome. Don't need those lines. Oh wait, no, that's right. I do need those lines. Ah, because this line runs down the side, like that. That's what we needed. There we go. And then I don't need any of these. There we go. Those are the lines we needed. There's nothing we don't really need. That just sort of lines up there. That just sort of lines up there. Then those are the bevel cuts. Wow, we are just about done here. This is great. See, there we go. Those lines are much clearer. Don't actually need any of this. There we go. We need a little bit of this, I think. Nope, nope, that's all flat. That line is all covered. This edge is going to be important. But I think that's it. 
Yep. 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 The rest of this is not important. That's not important. Oh, yes, it is. There is one undercut right there. Which means we need that line. And then we got all this crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. There we go. There is an undercut there. There is an undercut there. Sweet. So why did I leave those edges in there? Because they're pretty significant. You can kind of see there's still a pretty pretty decent edge there, but this is the harsh one. This is the one we're going to want to actually just join there. Because otherwise that's that's too many undercuts. Too many undercuts for one build. That's already so many things. All right, we're going to erase all the lines in here because I don't want to go through and do all those lines. That's that's mean. Don't make me. Okay. okay. Remove all that. Don't need it. Move this up here. Do need it. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. So this is that one of those big, big joined pieces I was telling you about. Um, so we're only going to keep half of it. We're going to split it down the middle. And weirdly enough, it only hid part of that. That's weird. It hid one, but not the other line. What an interesting way to do that. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to leave this as one piece just because I don't actually think it's that obtrusive, but I'll only keep one side of this. So we're going to reset our model view, grab all these pieces. We're going to erase one side of it here from our grip. Super easy. I just hold control and click on all the things I want to keep, i.e. one one full side. Oh, and uh, of course, the entirety of this piece, which I will consider small enough to be uh, one piece. There we go. Hold on to that, hold on to that, hold on to that. And that piece there. With that, we have one half left. And the rest of it can be removed. There we go. And now we go to settings, print and paper settings, I print and letter. And I make sure that I print alignment marks for multiple pages because some of these pieces are definitely big enough to be on multiple pages. And then I organize all the parts, but not on live stream because it's 701 and I got to like, go do other things. Uh, again, big thanks to my new patrons. So happy to have you guys with us. For now, I have been Jaden. I cannot wait to get these templates to you guys. Uh, we're going to be going through uh, some more of this next week. Uh, and pretty soon we're going to be getting to build this which is very exciting. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you want to know anything else about these, check out some of our other live streams. Uh, and of course I have uh, affiliate links for all the tools and things that I use. I've been Jaden. Thank you guys so much for coming out to this live stream. Take care.